So I want to spend literally a minute uh, finishing this last lecture up and that's got to do with um, um, a, a separation technique called electrophoresis. So this is a name of an analytical uh, separation in which a mixture of amino acids in solution can be separated and actually this um, technique could be um, applied to um, uh, proteins as well. Uh, but we're just going to uh, talk about amino acids right now and so you could extrapolate and see and use the same technique for proteins. So um, what it is, you have a, a mixture of amino acids. Um, let's say we have a lysine, uh, phenylalanine, and a glutamic acid, those three amino acids in which the PIs are, are very different. And you put the three uh, amino acids in a pH, um, which uh, coincides with the uh, PI of phenylalanine. All right, so we have mixture of lysine, phenylalanine, and glutamic acid, and this PI is at 5.5. And glutamic acid, as you know, is around in three. Lysine is around nine, but it's in. It's the mixture is sitting in um, solution at 5.5. All right. So the phenylalanine is going to be in this PI form, right, uh, the, uh, the neutral form. And the uh, glutamic acid um, is going to be in, in this form, right, because it's uh, greater than um, is PI, uh, the solution that it's sitting in. So it's going to have some kind of negative charge associated with it, right? And then, um, the lysine um, is going to have a uh, plus charge because it's going to is sitting in a in an environment that's more acidic than its pi right so it's going to have a, a plus charge right and this is going to be neutral so what happens is um, an instrument looks like this um, so you have the mixture of these three amino acids and a, and a paper in the middle and this is sitting in a, in a solution and um, you turn the uh, power on and depending on the, um, the charge, um, it's going to move either uh, toward a negative electrode or a positive electrode depending on what charge it has uh, when the current is applied. All right? So this is before the power is turned on and then after the power is turned on, you notice that the phenylalanine did not move because it's sitting in the same pH as its pi, so it's not going to move either way because it's neutral. But then glutamic acid, um, we said, is going to be in a negative charge species um, as we uh, went over before, right? Glutamic acid is going to be a negatively charged species. It's going to move toward the positive electrode, as you see here. And then the lysine, which has a positive charge, is going to move toward the negative electrode. So it's attracted um, to the opposite charge, and it will move uh, when the current is on. And how much it moves depends on the amount of charge and amount of mass that it has. So um, you can see now that uh, how this could be applied to proteins. So proteins that have you know, a lot of, uh, for example, negative charges, um, because it's got a lot of uh, acidic amino acids, then will move towards the uh, positive electrode um, and etc. All right. So there are a couple questions associated with uh, um, electrophoresis in the, in the last um, lecture that you should be able to do now. All right. So um, this lecture really is um, a lecture about how amino acid could be synthesized and uh, there are four methods that are given in your book and I'm going to go over them briefly um, because all these are review of the chemistry that you already uh, know. All right. Um, so the first one which is the alpha halo acid, um, what you're doing there is just a direct uh, displacement uh, reaction where the alpha halide, so this is the alpha carbon, 
it's going to um, be displaced with a, a, a nucleophile, ammonia, in an SN2 manner, and um, the ammonia amine uh, takes place of the bromine uh, by kicking it out, right? Now, because you're starting with uh, um, the racemic at this uh, center, you're also going to get a racemic product, but even um, even if um, you started with some chiral uh, material, it's, it's very hard to um, do this reaction uh, totally uh, um, with 100% um, uh, retention of the um, chiral center. All right? So m all these reactions that we're going to look at are going to produce racemic at this um, chiral center. Okay? Let me not do that because I don't want you to think that's radical. All right, so that car center is going to be receiving getting both R and S. The second reaction is uh, amino malonate, um, which is this compound right here. Um, you've seen the uh, diethyl malonate uh, without this group before. So this uh, starting material has the amido group uh, attached to it already. And what you're doing is uh, essentially this proton right here is acidic. It's going to deprotonate it and form a, a, a enolate at this carbon. And then you react with uh, some kind of alkyl halide to put the R group on. Um, and once again, that's going to uh, be attached from either top or the bottom. It's going to uh, produce a racemic uh, center here. And all this is is hydrolysis of all three groups. So this is going to become carboxylic acid, this is going to be carboxylic acid, and this is going to be amine because the amide is going to be hydrolyzed. And then the heat is going to uh, decarboxylate one of the carboxylic acid because it's, um, it's got the beta uh, carbonyl carboxylic acid allowing the decarboxylate uh, carboxylation to occur. Okay, And that's how you would get the racemic amino acid. Um, the third is probably the uh, one that's used most often because it's the simplest. Um, all you do for this is you take a, a, an aldehyde and ammonia with um, hydrogen cyanide and um, you come up with the alpha amino nitrile as the uh, intermediate and then you hydrolyze the nitrile um, and turn that into our carboxylic acid to get the alpha amino acid. And obviously this is going to be a racemic uh, compound as well. Um, the equation below that is showing you uh, the mechanism by which um, you are forming an imine, that's the um, intermediate um, aldehyde, and uh, primary amines give you imine. You should know this by now. And this is the um, basically um, reacting at this carbon and making the double bond break. Um, so it's a nucleophilic uh, reaction to that double bond to form this carbon-carbon bond and then uh, hydrolysis uh, of this uh, will eventually go to um, the, the amino acid, all right, from the amino nitrile. Um, all these three um, reactions that we just went over uh, produces uh, racemic um, amino acids. So um, because our body is so um, um, selective and we know, uh, enzymes know the difference between the, uh, the L amino acids and the D amino acids, um, it's much more useful if you could produce amino acids that are um, just one form, either R or an S, not a racemic mixture. And so this enantioselective synthesis that is shown here is actually the uh, synthesis that is used um, in, in industry um, to produce the drug called L-DOPA, um, which is an amino acid, um, not the 20 amino acids that you learned, but um, this is the um, the um, amino acid in the fact that this alpha carbon has amino in the carboxylic acid group and it has this R side chain um, so it belongs to an amino acid um, 
uh, category and it's called L-DOPA and this drug is given to uh, Parkinson's disease patients uh, because they lack dopamine. Um, dopamine is actually without the uh, carboxylic acid, it's not a chiral compound and you might ask why not give the uh, patients dopamine directly. Uh, the problem with that is the dopamine does not, um, doesn't do the patients any good because um, it does not uh, cross the um, blood-brain barrier. Um, so you can give the dopamine to patient, but um, the dopamine somehow has to get into their brain where uh, dopamine is lacking, so it doesn't work. Whereas this L-DOPA, which is the precursor to dopamine, does cross the barrier. So um, in the brain, uh, there is a decarboxylase uh, enzyme that recognizes just the L-DOPA and it decarboxylates, but it doesn't uh, decarboxylate the uh, D-DOPA. So um, pharmaceutical companies have to make sure that the drug only has 100% of the L-DOPA, not mixture of the uh, L and a D-DOPA, all right? So this coming up with this amino acid in 100% pure form is necessary. And uh, the chemists who discovered this um, enantioselective synthesis method have won Nobel Prize for it. And what then they've done is um, they've done an um, asymmetric hydrogenation reaction in which you're delivering two hydrogens, um, one here and one here. So it's a hydrogen delivery system, but it delivers the hydrogens only from one phase uh, with these chiral catalysts that you see here. So they've come up with the catalyst, chiral catalyst that acts sort of like an enzyme in which the hydrogen, two hydrogens is delivered from the bottom phase as you can see here. Um, and so the um, L-DOPA uh, synthesis is possible. All right. Um, and so this kind of chemistry is used now um, in order to synthesize um, uh, chiral uh, amino acids um, using this technology and then um, the type of um, chemistry that is used is that you know they can make uh, different kind of amino acids that are not um, naturally occurring or some of the chemists have made the unnatural amino acids this way and to see if those unnatural amino acids are incorporated into proteins, what kind of um, influence the, uh, the um, protein has in its activity, all right? So that's a whole new different kinds of um, uh, research that um, could be pursued by being able to synthesize these uh, chiral amino acids, all right? So at this point, you should be able to do these 12, 25.12, 25.17, 25.18, and 19, um, which are uh, got to do with uh, synthesizing these um, amino acids.